the Pentagon think on. We've just gotten lazy about it. We're like what the first time I heard the United States was worried about like shoe bombers and stuff, I was like, what? Dude, yeah. you had nukes pointed to blow up every single friggin' city, and now you're worried about people with shoes. <laughs> what are you, what are you, how, how the mighty have gotten scared? Yeah. Like, you guys were like, I mean, we were like, no, nah, we're not going to change our ways for anything. Screw you. We got nukes too. You fire, you're dead. And that's the yeah. way it was going to work. And in the at the end of the day, I kind of am happy about that. Like, I don't want the United States to become a uh, world dominating power, obviously. But um, the general idea of uh, peace and prosperity for as many countries as po possible uh, while letting them all run themselves, because the United States could have done some serious shit after World War II if it wanted to. Sure. And, and, and that's they what, tried to. That's what Russia was going to be. That's why Russia was so worried. Mm -hmm. And I they mean real right stuff, not what they did. Not what they did. Like, I'm not talking about the little tiny border wars and Korea and well, shit. I mean, Curtis LeMay flying uh, like 40 B 52s in formation and crossing the failsafe and going flying over Vladivostok or whatever that country's called because they wanted the Soviet Union to send up fighters so that they could just go on in and drop their bombs. That's how close it came. I'm well aware of that. Yeah, it's crazy. They're, they're in crazy, yes. That's why I, I'm glad that they're not in charge anymore. They, and, were, uh, uh, they were too much in a war mentality when the war yes, was over. Yes, because, well, they were, firstly, they were World War II heroes. Yeah. And they wanted more. You know, LeMay was said. I know. Uh, LeMay and his, uh, his subordinate, General Tommy Power, who is described as a sadist. Thank God you guys had Ike. Right. Uh, Ike was like, uh, I've been to war. We don't want any more of that. And they wouldn't dare. <laughs> That's right. I well, wouldn't catch an Ike. I'd, he'd smack you around. Once Kennedy took the White House, they thought they had carte blanche. They found out quick that they didn't. That's why they hated him so much. Well, and that's what I mean. There's so many conspiracy theories about that. But Lemay let's not let's say, let's not even hey, let's, let's try to talk about, right. let's talk about science about this though. Maybe we can start World War Three. I'm more concerned with um, like obviously he's a kind of uh, big pain in our side right now. Ooh. But he Putin? Putin, but he yeah. can't win a war. And and China is very hesitant to go play that game because they've done that before and it didn't turn out well, you know. Uh, well, I've heard no, it I'm, said that the first thing he did was he wanted to protect the Crimea because that's Russia's only warm water port. Of course. They've had it for 400 years. No, no, I know what they yeah. want. Yeah. I, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying about, like, I know the, the ins and outs of that. And well, I understand I'm just the position. I don't. You know, oh, okay. Well, yeah, I'm just saying what I, I'm just parroting. But what don't I don't be, but don't believe that uh, it is something that uh, uh, I mean. These are strategic games they're playing. Oh, like, yeah, if course. you know what I mean. Yeah, they've. I mean, been playing them forever. I mean, let's. I mean, as much as we might want to joke, like if it like, you can't attack Iran. Why can't you attack Iran? Because China put a trillion dollars into Iran. Mm. Simple as that. Yeah, we it's do, too I much mean, money. Iran. And this is, is what, this is where it's all playing out, and it's all about controlling who gets to control the spigots. I just saw a video on the side today. It said nuclear war with Iran? A question mark. I'm like, come on. Obviously man. not. Stop that shit. No, you're not going to have any any. Uh, there's going to be no war unless there's a way to win, and there's no way to win. No, you, everything that we've built since the beginning of of America would be destroyed in one day. Probably. And most of the population. It would be over. Well, then we're going to end up like them aliens that, trying to redo their genes by taking ours. Well, think about... Well, we'll just think about amazing now. What? Isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing now how a country like Iran that has 23 million people can be holding everyone else to ransom? You know, 
Yeah. Basically, yeah, they get well, yeah, but dollars for miles. Let's face but what it, I mean is we cause that. that. Yes, yeah, because at the end of it, the end of it, we don't want them getting smart. Because if they weren't wasting money on all this weaponry and geopolitics, they would be creating a really well educated, uh, I suppose you could call it, uh, some form of a utopia for their population. You know, which which was about 1979, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So since then, you know, like all their oil's been destroyed in weapons. You know, really, that's and what we're doing. We're destroying the greatest energy Gary, we've ever had in weapons. But let's not let's nice let's let's watching all these people play their little games. I'm not. I I'm still thinking that uh, this this is this is all uh, something that, in a way, you can see the disconnect between the understanding of ourselves. And the understanding of things like a cell phone or this computer. You can see how much we don't even know how we work compared to how much we know about other things. And and the science of political science is a shit show. Um, let's talk about that, about AI and how weird that it would be to, because uh, I have some concerns about that. Tell you, tell you myself. Okay. Well, I just mean in general, if you think about it. I'm not saying Terminator type stuff here, but mm -hmm. you know, it is. It's a very weird situation to have the possibility of your savior also be your the devil. <laughs> yeah. I mean, wow. we talk about what it would be like to to uh, if another alien species existed or came towards our planet. We are or an alien intelligence. We are literally making an alien intelligence on planet Earth. Yeah, that's yeah. not concerning anyone. Like, I mean, we talk about what would happen if another thing that was more intelligent us met us and the possible consequences being holy crap. But then we go ahead and make the same thing. Yeah, it just doesn't seem I mean, <laughs> And then you find humans that would like aid and abed them against their own yeah. kind. It's, I know. Well, look how twisted in, uh, counter intel can be. I mean, you have FSB playing with, uh, like the CIA plays with stuff and the FSB plays with stuff. I would have to say that uh, the only thing I can be happily assured is most of the other countries have stayed uh, aware, but away from it. It's like watching the first cyber wars take place. Hmm. And now that AI is part of it, do you think that they are going to give a crap about it, about restrictions that you guys put on your AI? Mm -hmm. Do you think that China's going to give a crap about that? Right. Right. I mean it, really, when you think about it. Because, I mean, uh, the way that I see it is that, like, just like many other countries have learned, we had agents in Canada from India, and you have had agents in from China in your countries, and they're do they're stealing stuff because they don't care about your copyright or any of the rules. And to be perfectly honest, why would they? Like if you have a piece of technology and you're saying I'm not going to give it to you or the ability to make it, then I'll just go take it from you. If you're my enemy country, mm -hmm. or or a country I don't give a crap about. Like, it's not their laws that's harming them. It's yours. It's like, and if you're in America, you think that's important. But as soon as you leave America, you realize every country has that. It's like every state. And why would China care about your laws? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, do you think that I think they're copying more than DVDs is what I'm saying. Mm hmm. So you're basically playing a game where you already have a de facto cyber war and a de facto intelligence war going on. 
it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Um, but I'm really concerned about what they will do, like, like if they could flood everything. Like, what, what do you mean? Who's they? Well, if I can, I can get an AI program. I, I'm just mm -hmm. going to explain to you in game terms, okay? So there's this game called Skyrim, and it's a big game, and it has lots of swords and sorceries, and you meet lots of characters, and most of them have all their voices voiced. But ChatGTP has worked with this mod, and you can put this mod in, and you can ask questions, and they'll just make stuff up based on their character in the game, mm -hmm. on the fly, just talking about stories their grandfather might have told or whatever. And it's very interesting. But if you can take that to the next level in gaming, well, the next level in past gaming is going to go into, well, what if I basically make a whole whack of accounts, have AI go in and just completely flood the discourse of everything and they can answer instantly. And they're gonna, you won't be able to get a word in edgewise and the people who will have complete control over what you're thinking, besides the mi minority of actual people who are actually talking, will be the AI telling you what to think and controlling what, and I mean what you like, I guess, because it's not really what you think. I mean, it's some people, it, I mean, propaganda never 100% effective, I guess is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Like, did anyone ever believe that it was, you know, I mean, we believed in a general sense of the American dream and how well, positive things were going to be in the 80s. Well, and correct. then they started dumbing things down pretty quick. But, well, I was going to say, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. I wrote this. I'll, write, I'll read it to you. Sure. Correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Is it me or is it possibly true that as soon as the United States landed on the moon, yes, I think we went using secret space tech, uh, did we just say, ah, okay, we've arrived. We can now stop being the leader in manufacturing and, well, everything. We stopped making TVs, stereos, speakers. All of a sudden, U.S. businesses began disappearing, right, when credit cards became available, 1970s. Right, right at the beginning of the Great Decline, my class of 1978 was the last hiring date for the big three for some 35 years. The company eventually broke apart and went belly up, but that was their plan all along. We're plentiful driving up bankruptcies and anything. Now we have to rely on imports for everything. What happened? The decline of America had begun. It had to be collusion by big business owners and CEOs to do this to enrich themselves and avoid all public responsibility. Should be criminal to do so. We have become lost. What do you think of that? Uh, I can even tell you who did it. There's an old Vulcan proverb that says only Nixon can go to China. No, no doubt. That dude was such a fucking cancer. The moment you Pulver. guys accepted, the moment you guys accepted, in my mind, I just mean in a general historical fa idea here, uh, you can debate me, I'm just spitballing, but I would think that the biggest time is when you basically said, no, no, it's okay if you don't have human rights, we'll still trade with you. Yeah. That was the problem. Mm -hmm. You had a right. big, big, big leverage of basically saying, no, you get, get your shit together and then we'll trade with you. And US, that, yes, US that, ideals. That was a really good idea right through Kennedy and everything like that. Yes. You know, that's one of the questions Khrushchev or things Khrushchev told Kennedy at their summit. He said, why is it that United States policy isn't the same as your uh, image? You know what I mean? Like our, our what do you call that? Uh, ethics you know and morals they're mm -hmm. not the same as what we preach we don't practice what we preach no no what are you saying and he was right yeah you're full of shit
that we have too many people that are greedy. It just but, takes but one bad again, apple. Again, no, no, you're you're absolutely right, and you have a society that allows bribery. Yes, it, uh, it, yeah, it, that's it, right. I think that that's I think right. that with that, just two things would make America feel would bring progress up in a polite way, and I don't mean like. Like right now, people are talking about woke stuff, and I'm like, okay, guys, this is a thing that's going to pass, just like punk rock did, okay, just like bell bombs did, okay. There's all this is going to go away, okay. Don't worry about it. You're going to be in ten years. You're going to be worried about people wearing TVs on their heads or some shit. Don't yeah. worry about it, okay. It's going to constantly just keep on trucking, okay. Yeah. And it'll stop being weird, just like the the idea of being gay is no longer weird. You just, ex- it, it's okay. And awareness doesn't mean I condone or want or anything like that. Uh, and we'll eventually learn that just like with the ADHD meds and everything else that we shouldn't have been giving them to children all along. So that's another thing that will change. Hey, and then you know, we'll all stop worrying about it and move on to the new thing to freak out about. I have to reread that, Neil. My mic was off. No, it wasn't. I'm a- um, well, not to you, but to the people listening. Oh, just put it in. I'll just it put was it in. Rea- it was really good. You would right. like it, guys. I'll you say like it again. I'll say it again right now. All Correct right. me if I'm wrong, but is it me or is it possibly true that as soon as the United States landed on the moon, yes, I think we went, did we just say, ah, okay, we've arrived. We can stop being leader in the world manufacturing and, well, everything. We stopped making TVs, stereos, speakers. All of a sudden, U.S. businesses began disappearing, right when credit cards became available. At the beginning of the great decline, my class of 1978 was the last hiring date for the big three for some 35 years until the 90s or late 90s. Yeah. The company broke apart eventually and went belly up, but I think it was planned all along. We're plentifully driving bankruptcies and anything up. Now we have to rely on imports for everything. What happened? The decline of America had begun. It had to be collusion by big business owners and CEOs to do this to enrich themselves and avoid all public responsibility. Remember that? It should be criminal to do so. We have become lost. Yeah, that was what I said. I wrote that. And you thought uh, it was and, pretty accurate? Well, yeah, you could even I could even tell you well, the other thing that happened besides the Nixon situation, obviously, going right, right. that is that you we lowered built tax. Up China. <laughs> yes. But you lowered tax. That's yeah. the that's the situation. You used to have a tax of like seventy, eighty, ninety percent. So to alleviate the tax you had to spend money on what was called innovation because you had to basically take a uh, to to basically invest reinvest that money. That money could not be taxed, so that you would only get taxed uh, on that one. So that co- that company would then invest in something, and down the line. So you basically are trying to go further, make all these companies in an effort to innovate. Because you're spending all this money trying to alleviate the fact that you have taxes to pay. And that basically forced a whole whack of educated workers mm-hmm. into uh, basically all the way through the 1970s, 60s, 70s, 80s, well, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and that was it. Then it was like, we're no longer going to innovate. We're just going to keep on using everything that we already have and that's entrenchment with regards like that's industry entrenchment and it's not really good for an economy it, it's not it's not capitalism it's basically the rich just beating people up so and, why is it you think they did it because they because they wanted to pay lower tax well they bribed you and got you to lower your like basically lobby and yeah they lowered i never tax. remember voting on it you know, well, of course was, you didn't. But think of think of Reagan, trickle down economy. That's what yeah, the whole right. thing. Yeah, and Reagan, he was basically saying if we if we drop the tax, blah blah blah. And that's when everyone was driving around with all these cars because there's so much extra money to make. 
Right. And but it was a delusion because it all came crashing down in 1989. And yeah, remember 2008? <laughs> that was a bad year. Well, yes, but that didn't happen to all countries. No, no. Like, I mean, it was, it was, it was, let them fail. It didn't happen here. Thank God. Because you know what we said? We said, say, wait, 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 wait. You want to take the money from a bunch of mortgages and then leverage that and try to gamble with it? Yeah. No. Ah, please. No, that's stupid. That's just going to crash. And then what happened? It crashed. Like, I mean, it was (laughs) obvious what was going to happen. Right. You know, it'll probably crash again, too. I just I think the stock market is a scam. The super rich is, play on. Yeah. yeah, of course. It's gambling. But don't, but don't don't think of it like like that. Uh, see, the, all of this stuff has a reason for being there, but it will. It certainly will have to be something that you guys just agree that needs to be changed, like just like there's two things that you could really, really help with. And like I said, no more lying on television and no more bribery. Yes. Just stop those two things and you guys could have like those two things are considered practically sacrosanct in here. Like you, you would be like, if you watched a, what we'll say more conservative leaning media in Canada versus left-leaning media in Canada, you will call it, okay? You will find they both speak the same language because the only thing they're allowed to do is ask questions. They can't make an opinion. That's not their job. A reporter's job is only to ask questions and to record what you say. (laughs) And that's how it's supposed to be. You don't get some guy going on going, I'm pissed off about this because of Jewish space lasers and a bunch of other shit. And you're not supposed to be, you, that's just, that shouldn't be listened to. You know, that's just crazy shit. Yes, anyway, definitely. Uh, because it's like 15 minutes of hate. You don't want people creating your day full of hatred. It's just not healthy anyway. I mean, your neighbors, exactly. no matter who they are, are yeah. almost all the same as you. People right. are like, Oh, but you're Canadian. You don't. Well, I like guns, but you don't think that. No, I just because I read, I can read and read the Constitution of the United States and read the Second Amendment and notice the first words are a well, a well maintained. I think it's militia or something is vital to the defense of a state. OK, so that's right, what you're talking right, about. Right. That doesn't mean that I want to take away your guns or something. I'm just saying, don't be dumb. That's not what it says. Don't try to pretend it's something it's not. That's not helping your argument. Like, but, just change the change the put put it in there. You can't take your guns. That's fine by me. I, I don't care. Just don't pretend it's something it's not. Right. That's yeah. that's my thoughts on that. I mean, again, no problem with firearms of any kind. I mean, except for I have a problem with pistols outside of a firing range no. not on a police officer but that's like a canadian thing it's very and us and as andrew would probably say an australian thing if you're like yeah you can see a guy walking down with a shotgun you won't think much of it you see a guy walking down the road with a pistol you're calling the cops yeah well, unless you know him yeah. no it's just it's it's because that guy's probably going to do something bad because you don't have a pistol unless you're going to do something bad yeah, you know? people open carry here no, no, I'm not judging your country. I'm just trying to say that that's that's where the that difference comes in. But I, I have nothing against. It's just because they're people killers. I, I don't really like that idea. But don't get me wrong. I agree with military hardware too. Yeah. So I'm a weird guy. Okay, yeah. I'm kind of in the middle there. Okay, but I have. A I understand. I'm not I've, I've stupid. never shot it outside of it a target. You know, I have uh, Smith and Wesson nine millimeter. <laughs> I killed a squirrel and shot at a bunch of targets. And oh my God, the pumpkins I have murdered. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, of course, it's varmint season and you get your 22 out, right? Yeah. Of course. And then you have to you can go and for 10 bucks, you could go get your varmint license and then go to a gravel pit, take those pumpkins from everyone's doorstep because it's November now. <laughs> they don't yeah. care. It's like, where did our pumpkin go? Who cares? Yes, you need to liberate Canada. 
exactly. Or, well, or, or the other way around, but I don't think we need another 50 provinces, Jared. Come on. Do you, do you think, uh, not to change the subject, but I want to oh, kind, of, I want to kind of get back on the electric universe for Please. a minute. Um, what do you think uh, that it is that mainstream cosmologists truly in their heart think electricity is some benign force that, uh, you know, there's only one force, the electric force. Everything else is a dimension. You of that. may be right. I, I honestly, if the structured atom model from Ido Kahl is actually correct, the idea of atoms having a, I mean, just just the two things, that and, of course, the idea of electric gravity. Mm -hmm. Yes, which, and, and, which, you know, I, which, do, I do believe, I agree with Walt Thornhill's uh, synopsis. I, I agree with his hypothesis. Right. I would want to test it more, but in electric essence, I have no dipole. problem with it. Yes, exactly. Is it and electric dipole or magnetic dipole? I always electric. Electric, right, because everything is electric, even magnetism. But the the idea is basically that it's the atoms are quote unquote bent out of shape and the um the middle mass which is positively charged is leaning more towards the negatively charged surface of the planet so this causes uh this to be attracted and it cannot be shielded because it's inside of a bunch of electrons so the electrons move around in the electric force like when you touch a balloon your hair stands on end uh -huh. but it cannot do that with gravity that's one of the biggest things about it it cannot happen it is sh not shieldable gravity is not shieldable in any way like like electric electric forces like you can build a faraday cage around something like a hard drive and the and that's how you protect them. Yeah. And yeah. an electric force will not. Can you can build a Faraday cage around yourself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I sleep with grounding, you know, my ear thing, actually. I got a little pole driven in the ground. And every, every minute that I'm in my room, I'm grounded or earthing. There is a difference, although I don't really understand the difference. Do you? What? Between grounding earthing and, and grounding? No, they're nothing different. They're not. No. Okay. Same thing. Okay. Well, I mean, you could say there's something different, but at the end of the day, you're basically making your, you well, have the same, you're going to have zero because the ground side has zero. Is it not better to pound an eight foot pole into the ground and come straight from that to your wrist? Or it, can you just plug it in the wall and get the same effect? You could probably just plug it in the wall. And get the same effect. Electrically speaking, the the that that bottom thing or the 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 third rail. Well, you get electrons. It's connected it's, directly to the ground, like outside the like of your house. Yeah, yeah. Your pipes are usually metal, and they're also part of the ground. So all that's part of the ground. I see, but like they say, when you walk barefoot on the earth, that you're getting electrons from the earth. But if you're not, if you're just plugged into the wall, you probably wouldn't be getting electrons, right? Whatever your, well, the way it works is, is that like a Van de Graaff generator, the charges in your body mm -hmm. can be, go up or down. Mm -hmm. Like yes. and when you charge yourself up, your yes. hair stands on end, as you've seen. And then mm -hmm. if you have to drain yourself out, you can drain yourself right out. And that's why we wear those little things on our wrist when we're doing work with electric stuff. And we plug them right into the wall. When, okay. When you put your finger on a doorknob and get a shock, is that positive or electric or negative leaving your body? It would be uh, the electric charge would be. Is it electrons or ion or protons leaving you? Honestly, I'm not sure. Now you made me question. Yeah, I'll check that out. I, I think it might be electrons. But I'm not However, sure. the end result, though, is that that power seems very um, like that charge is what I'm actually referring to when when I say that there is a the force of gravity has, depends on the specific gravity, quote unquote, of the um, items in question that are that give density. So you need the specific gravity of something to give the, um, 
um, and the mass of it versus its volume, basically. And all that combined on the planet Earth gives the Earth its apparent mass relative to the sun, because we can measure that because of how fast we're going and how fast we're turning and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So when you look at it that way, then when I say that there's something different that happens when you charge that up. So when you have, you could make, basically if you charge up and make the electron stronger in this situation, then you could theoretically they would be more circular and less dipole so basically the more charge a body has the less gravity it has so you these two are these two are related and that's why i think I gravity is attracted to say a tor side of a tornado because the outside of a tornado has the same charge as the ground around it and it's pulling up the electric ground mm -hmm. upwards in a in a spiral towards the sky and a truck sticks to the side of that or other things stick to the side of that because it feels like the ground and That's we're attracted to it just using that dipole effect that wouldn't be able to happen in a um einsteinian universe right because we would still be attracted to the earth and we wouldn't be attracted to the side of the tornado but we clearly are i mean that's a i don't want to say a fact that we can't dispute because i'm sure someone can yeah. but it there's a lot a lot of evidence to seem to be that effect yeah. is the truth um right and the sun and earth are connected in real time because whatever happens to the sun it seems to affect the earth uh, profoundly well, yes, I I feel that that <clears throat> might be the case indeed. Um, but going even on to the charge idea of uh, of well, the other one with the with uh, Ido Kahl's idea of the reason that the electrons cannot get any closer to the core is because there are electrons in the core. Oh, I see. Um, in the so, core of the star, the sun. No, the core of the of the Earth. nucleus of the atom. Oh, I see. Okay. So this nucleus of an atom has, it's mostly supposed to be positive with some neutrons in it. But I think it's positive and it can't get any closer because there's actually negative charges in it as well. Mm -hmm. it, plus, it's also bouncing off itself. I see. Because it's repelling on the other side of the uh, of the the positive charge that it gets around. Then these that that general idea that alone is if you apply that just to the asteroid belt, you can see the asteroid belt is a giant ring, which each asteroid represents a positive nucleus, and between them will form without you, you can't even see it, but I guarantee it's there. It will be negative uh, voids that will form between these positive ones. And they will attract these things so that they form a position, just like the rings of Saturn do, and they'll create layers. This organization, this, this is a self-organizing principle of plasma and uh, basically, it, it was affectionately referred to as the likes, likes, like policy uh, by Sagan, or I think. But basically, you have a positive charge and a positive charge is sitting there. A negative charge will form between them and pull them together, but not too close because they'll positively reflect each other. So that creates a balance, you see, mm -hmm. and it creates a web. And that's where that's what all the rings of all the plants are are these layers and they're at the magnetic neutral point so they oh. can't go up and they can't go down just like the earth can't go up and can't go down layers of plasma yes well, remember plasma doesn't have to be hot that's a trick yeah. that uh, people like to think uh, I, and it makes sense in a way 
if you don't understand, but if you understand that it's basically anything that can carry electricity. And so it could be lava, it could be smoke, it could be bad weather, water, dirty water, preferably. So all these things are conductors. Mm -hmm. And that very de varying degrees of success. See. So, and that's why by even having, by saying that they are conductors and they are not superconductors implies that they have a resistance. And if they have a resistance, which they do, this means that it is a, it, it basically, it basically adheres to Ohm's law. If it adheres to Ohm's law, then it's not super, it's not superconductive. There's not just magnetic fields out there. The magnetic fields must be powered by electricity. And that alone throws out the dynamo core idea and a whole whack of other things that we thought were true just with that alone. See, and they don't want to get rid of it. They would rather make up magnetic reconnection theory, which can't happen because you can't break magnetic fields. It's like saying, I'm going to a topographical map of Mount Everest and I'm going to cut this map and you can see that how it rearranged the earth, the uh, the lines and since the lines across Mount Everest broke a great massive amount of power was released. No, you blew up Mount Everest with a bunch of dynamite. That's why the map changed, not the other way around. And that's yeah. what they're that's what they're saying, you know. It's that crazy. Mhm. Mm to me I mean, that's like it's like saying uh, it's just so cart for the horse. It's 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 not science, and I can't even understand how right. they can claim it to be. Like well, my yeah. professor would slap them almost. I would swear to God, he'd probably just walk out. Are you serious? Get out of my office. Get out of here. Go go. <laughs> well, it brings to mind to me. Um, it's like this. Our mainstream cosmologists in, uh, in the middle ingrained in a conspiracy, if you will, to keep it like it is, the status quo, or, okay. I mean, are they it is really that? It nature to keep it. No, no. I think that, I think if I was a betting man, yeah. this all started uh, with the love of mathematics and the decline they no, basically why, they right? well they gave him a clean uh, Hans Alfin came up with ambiplasma or the idea of plasma that is uh super conductive and this is what he thought at the beginning and of course in 1970 he made the famous Nobel Prize thing where he won the Nobel Prize and they and he said stop using my work it's wrong mm. uh because that's not how plasma works and we know that now right Right. And they didn't listen to him and they didn't listen to him because mathematically it's much more convenient because although the math in electrical engineering is hard. Yeah, it's not impossible. Right. And right. but it is impossible to predict. For example, as much as I can tell you how many lightning strikes are going to hit the United States on average in right. the next night. Or the next right. hour, right. I can't tell you where they're going to hit. See? Yeah, yeah, and I always, you know, in and my that thought, uncertainty yeah. is what is what causes the problem with, because they like the clockwork universe. They like saying that the Earth is going to de be destroyed in a giant fireball when the sun explodes yeah. this many years from now. Yeah, and that's they don't have a clue. It, they don't it, have a clue. And it's nothing. It, it is. They get indoctrinated. Yes. And I'm not saying that they're not, in, like, I'm not even trying to say that they're indoctrinated incorrectly because at the beginning you learn science. It just, and you learn what the scientific theory is. And then somehow there becomes an exception to, like, for example, three things that I think have way too many exceptions in them. Uh, geology, uh, biology and astrophysics those three right there tell me you have a big i have big problems with millions and millions of years and suddenly poof 
And I also I also have problems with uh, with well, okay, we say it works like that, and you can't say it's wrong because you can't test it. That's not science. Absolutely not. No. Literally not. Uh, and Einstein uh, had a word for it. It was but a the German people, word. but the people yeah. doing work, the people doing the good are doing good work. Like uh, uh, astronomers and stuff, they point in the cameras. They're looking, and just because it doesn't line up with what people think, doesn't mean that it's not worth. Right. Like, like I mean, eventually, like our technology is hitting a point because of our knowledge of electricity. Practically, I can't believe I'm saying that, but we use electricity to make the mirrors for these ultra specific telescopes that are seeing these wonderful pictures that you're seeing here mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. lo and behold it's not what's predicted well lo and behold we went to venus it's not what's predicted we went to mars it's not what's predicted we went right. to titan it's not what's predicted we went to maybe well, you're wrong well, they don't want to say hit... that though do they no. i want to say you're just freaking wrong you get the nail on the head when he said that uh they don't have, you know, they're just, they're, they don't have a clue what they're doing. But they're they're every single what assumption, they not one assumption has been proven. Not no, one. of course not. No. I mean, there's so many contradictions in their theories as well. What's the definition of insane? Well, like we've, but the truth of the matter is that science advances one funeral at a time it doesn't go any other way there's going to be a whole generations that are going into astrophysics that have seen um like the y files uh show there about the electric universe and seen thunderbolts of the gods and stuff like that and they're in this program and they're going to see people that yeah like, not to mention the fact that they control all the uh telescope time so, I mean, if you're not with, getting with the uh, party rules, then you find yourself in the outside looking in. You're, well, that's Science the thing. Supposed that's, to work. that's right now. Okay. But we're, we're in the, this is a revolution, not an evolution. Right. Grassroots. And it, it, no, no, we, I'm just, I'm not telling anyone to do anything. I'm just going to tell you that the, uh, the truth is the truth does point to itself. They will make better and better telescopes. They will get better and better findings, and all of them will be wrong. And they'll have to just admit. And they'll have to realize that these telescopes aren't lying. I don't care where they point the telescopes. The telescope will always prove the electric universe correct, and will always prove the conventional theory wrong because the conventional theory is most likely incorrect. Yes, and and that's what I mean, man. They can't. They can't. Even though they remember when black they holes were black holes. Oh, yeah. And then they became something we could see. That happened right within our lifetimes. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. that's exiting, the type of crap that we're dealing exiting with. Exiting plasma. Yeah. See what I mean? And, and I mean, you can go back to one of the... Uh, um, remember the episode of Star Trek, the original series, where um, there was... Um, Two guys that one had a little thing on his head and another one didn't, and they were fighting in a corridor. It was Lazarus or something, the Lazarus experiment. I can't remember something like that. Some somewhat. I, I know what you're talking about, but not you know, I'm not familiar with it. Well, I've heard of something. Well, anyway, I can't exactly remember everything about it, but one thing I do remember is that and this is 1967, maybe 68, and. Sp the whole like universe flickered i guess you could say the whole part of the galaxy flickered and of course you know captain kirk asks spock what's going on and he says all the magnetism has left uh, just suddenly stopped and everything ceased existing oh but only God, for a fraction awful. of a second yeah. but but i was like this was 1968 and they we're talking about electromagnetism in space still. So mathematics has really right. taken a, over that type of environment to the point where we're debating whether or not, like, what 11-dimensional beings can see. 
do you see how crazy that is when we haven't even figured out how to make a metal that can bend a dimension? You know, like we don't have no nothing in real life can do anything. So they are basing their their stuff on cosmologists' words that are full of crap. That's the biggest problem. That's the hindrance to society that's happening. That's the biggest problem we have because they are limiting, but not for intention, but ego and, or stupidity. And I'm not trying to say evil because it's not evil. Mm-hmm. It's just human nature, but they don't understand it because they're not psychologists and neither are we. But I know that. So here they are dealing with this problem. They're going to come in yeah. and um, they claim they're going to this this end result will be that they that they basically steamrolled into modern science and started changing uh, what we could have for questions. Um, and that's and that's part of to do with I, and I can't believe I'm going to blame Star Trek for this, but I'm blaming Star Trek a little bit for this because we gave the illusion that we could eventually travel faster than light. And the only way to do that is to go into another dimension. That's our idea of a warp drive. Okay. Uh, I see. see. And that doesn't exist. We have never been able to do that. We've never Mm -hmm. made a hole, a punched a hole in reality or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And. But if anything in this universe could do anything like that, it would be electricity. It's the magic of of the universe. And and it would happen probably at places like CERN or other extremely powerful, uh, uh, like uh, magnetic areas, like uh, like those places where you know uh, they as uh, like diamagn- diamagnetically float a, a, a strawberry or something or frog, you know, like <laughs> it, and that's great. That I mean, it's really hard to get a footage of that mm-hmm. because the magnetism is so strong to do that, but it doesn't affect the the frog, I guess. Right, just, right. Just, it takes uh, 15 Tesla to float a frog. That's see? what they call it. And the uh, TR-3B has puts out an estimated 10,000 Tesla. And I can't imagine doing that without watching it fly apart either. I know. I know. It's it? amazing, isn't it? It's under 150,000 atmospheres. Wow. And, and they've... I don't even material that can do that. I know. Are they, well, that's that stuff they found at Roswell. They they reinforced it. They found a way to cut it. They froze it. Now, this is according to this one dude named Bill who worked at Area 51. He had a baseball hat on. He was older. He seemed to know what to he was be, doing. I don't think he needed but, to come from aliens because, trust also, me, that other guy, I'd be impressed shit. either way. <laughs> yeah, he said that they... they super froze it and they could cut it with it some kind of a drill that was diamond or so i don't know but it, or saw but they they lined it three or four times and then that's what they put the plasma in and it it seems to do its job but they they have uh edward fouché has a video on it he said that it has under the pressure of 150,000 atmospheres super cooled to almost absolute zero and it, it has 60,000 revolutions a minute or a second. I think it's a minute. So. Well, even without that, um, in a much, much more simpler way uh, to make that kind of magnetism, uh, you take a bunch of capacitors, say, from a factory. Um, they use uh, capacitors mm-hmm. to balance all their motors to make sure, because each motor is an inductor and pulls the power. Never mind, I'm not going to explain power factor. Point is, is that it's cheaper to run capacitors. So you can take those capacitors, you put them down, and then you take a nice wire that's pretty thick, and you make one loop around it, Yeah. okay? And then you plug it into the other end of this capacitor. And then you could put a coin right in the middle, okay, held up by styrofoam or something. Okay. And then you drop the capacitor across it and of course it's instant because there's no chemical reaction with capacitors so it just travels at the speed of light and uh the current that is generated 
is enough to vaporize the uh, wire, but not before the wire creates the Lorenz effect, Lorenz force enough to shrink that coin. Amazing. And amazingly enough, some yeah. of these coins end up looking like they get shrunk down and they have a bulge in the middle, like a round bulge, uh -huh. just like the uh, moon pan. If you know what the that's a. No, I'm not familiar with it. Well, you can just type into Wikipedia pan moon. OK, as opposed to otherwise you're going to get some Seder. OK, let me see. Let me do that. Go ahead. Keep talking. I'm, I'm going to do that. Get well, it just it right. looks exactly like that. What uh, search what now? P A N moon. P A N moon. Okay, now I'll put the screen. Just get images here. All right, now I'll put it. I put the stream labs on it. Where are you at? Where are you at? I don't. That's one thing about stream labs that I can't stand. I don't it, even know how to use it. I gave up a lot. Uh, <laughs> oh God! It's uh, but OBS don't work for me anymore. Why Here. not? Is this it? Do you have the, the? I have the new studio one. It works great. Here it is, Pan Moon. Okay. All right. What, so, yeah. See what it looks like? Yeah, I do. Let's see. Get a picture over here. It looks like a hat. <laughs> Looks like a sailor hat or something. But you see how it has, well, number one, it's very interesting. It has six sides to it. Where's it at? Uh, around the orbit of uh, Saturn. Okay, Saturn. Oh, I see. So it's a Saturn moon. Yeah. I, I was not aware of this. Oh, it's completely tiny. Look it at that. It looks it, like a little Saturn moon. It's, uh -huh. found, it's found when we went swinging by it. But they think yeah. that it's piled up over the years of some debris on it. But in actuality, in my opinion, it was shrunk down like that oh, coin and it didn't get ring. fully cut. Yeah, I see that. I mean, look at the look at the etchings on it. I see it. Yeah. It's right in between the rings, huh? It's crazy. I didn't even know about that. You just taught me something new. Love it. It's Cape Smoke. And it's not the only one that has that. You still uh, like I mean, the herb. There's, I there, the there's a ring. There's a ring around it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there is, yeah. I see oh, that. no, no. I mean, uh, well, another moon that has a ridge all the way around it. Uh, What's it called? Encetilis, I think. Oh, Enceladus? How do you spell that? E-N? E-N-C-E, um, I think. Oh. Uh, it should pop up for you. <laughs> and so does. Yeah. It's another moon of Saturn. Oh, yes. I remember now. I don't know about this moon. I want to see if it's the right one or not. Oh, you're not seeing my screen? Oh, it's just taking a while to catch up. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. It does. It's It's got a delay of about 30 seconds, I think. That's fine. It's not that bad. I can just but share. Maybe it's not. With... Maybe it's not the right one. Well, I'll just share a screen, and then you can see it. What I'm looking at at the minute, because I don't know how much that delay is. Let's no, see. it's fine. No, I'm uh, just trying to remember the moon name. Um... Okay. No. Here. Oh, it's Oedipus. I A P E T U S. Oedipus, there it is. Uh, okay, Oedipus. Okay, E. What is it? Uh, I A P E T U S. Okay, try, start from the beginning. I A P. I A P. There. Oedipus. Oh yeah, I'm familiar with this too. Yep. Mm -hmm. But it has. Now what's that... what's the shit on it? Is something shit on it? Well. <laughs> electrically oh, look at that. Is being it's pulled, a... something is being pulled off of one and dumped on the other just like an like if you want to see an example of what i was talking about that's what i mean when a planet gets dumped on but electrically yeah. by another planet i remember this plant this is the one that uh tom van flandern said was uh it shows proof that a planet blew up that's what he was saying okay well, what so it does show, what that does show is that there's a ridge all the way around the whole. There planet. is, yes. Okay, and it's it. very, very tall. 
a lot uh-huh. taller than we well like 25 miles oh, the death star okay yeah i don't know about this but the point is is that that's what i mean when i say that a ridge hasn't fully capped off usually the magnetic field will turn the whole thing into a sphere if it has enough time it will shave off any extras and fling them off into space but if it doesn't have enough time, it can't finish the ring, and that will it will leave a ridge like Pan or like that plant, like that moon there. Who's the cat that wrote Star Wars? George Lucas. George Lucas. Yeah. I'll say when. What did George Lucas know, and when did he know it? <laughs> no. it looks just like the Death Star, you know. Well, some people uh, say it's artificial. It's not. No, I don't. I don't think so either. But where could, you don't, you the don't only thing a, that could come from is not another freaking comet or asteroid. No, that was another body. A thing. very yeah, it was very similar to, um, a, like imagine another body approaching the Earth and we had no atmosphere. Right. Uh, or, like the moon approached us, or we approached the moon, and that's possibly like created Tycho. But Tycho? we had an at, we had an atmosphere, so it didn't. The the crater Tycho. Oh, Tycho crater. Tycho. Yeah. Well, th- what what about uh, there was another one? There was another moon of Saturn that uh, it's kind of freaky. There's like sixty nine of them. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. Now, one of the bigger ones. I can't remember the name of it. it was so easy back. Well, in the, then there's Ganymede, the, of course. <laughs> yeah. See. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, well, it's Ganymede has uh, it's the only other body in the solar system that has its own magnetosphere. That's that's one thing. No, I No, it is not. No, what else? No. Well, it might be has. the only moon. Oh, that's what I meant. Yeah. Okay. Not or not a planet, but yeah, moon. No, I'm I'm fine with that. Yeah. <laughs> it's all, what that, is it? That, about that, as big as the moon, or is it about as big as our moon? I honestly don't know. Because it's strange for the Earth to have a moon as big as it is, isn't it? It's actually it's if you're if you're not lying to yourself, mm-hmm. you will find out. Like, remember when we talked about Pan's orbit? We noticed it was in the rings. Mm-hmm. Well, it, all the moons are generally in the rings, like not really? in the rings, but on okay. the same equatorial band. Well, they go out quite a bit, don't they? Well, to put it a different way, if you were on the surface of Saturn and it was a ball that you could look up from, you would see all the moons in a row across the equator in the sky. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't go up and down like our moon does. Our moon goes up and down every night because we it orbits on the same plane as the sun. That's the most important thing to note, that the moon orbits the same plane as the sun, not the Earth. It doesn't go around the Earth. It goes around the Earth, but it's orbiting the sun. Do you think it's possible that the brown, like the sandy look on uh, Saturn is just sand in the air? No, it's glowing. It's glowing? Are Saturn actually, it? Saturn and Venus both give off more light than they receive. Oh, I know that, but I just didn't know that it was still ionized. In fact, I'm of the opinion that uh, maybe later in the future someone could prove this, but... That's a great picture, by the way. It is, isn't it? Yes. To I me, there's that. so much energy plo- floating there. But you see how few moons are not, like there's three big moons or something that are not on the equator. That's it. Mm-hmm. All the other ones are well, actually two of them might actually be on the equator. Yeah, yeah, it's, like it's bigger, amazing. Bigger, yeah. bigger ones will have trouble, you know. Why do you suppose it is that uh, cosmology does not even address Saturn theory? Because they have a clockwork view of the universe based on. Um, what they think Sir, God wanted it to be. No, but Sir. What's his name? I can't believe that's slipping my mind right now. Um, Isaac Newton, Sir Isaac Newton. Uh, yeah, he's so, uh, what do they call that, sacrosanct? <laughs> yeah, 
and his universal law of gravitation has been sacrosanct but it's but then someone come along came along and said aha it's the bending of space and then provided no proof someone took a picture in 1919 and voila we have general relativity but yeah besides e equals mc squared which is true um uh as anyone who works on nuclear reactions can tell you uh then you end up with a uh a view of the universe that has no reason like in in if i make a big claim like say we'll go all the way back to faraday and faraday say said dude and somebody decided said dude what's up and he goes look if i put a magnet here and i put a current through this it spins what's that that's cool that idea the thing that he disproved okay by doing mm -hmm. is the principle for every electric motor ever it's also probably the reason why planets spin or their atmospheres this type of thing so that right there that simple thing that he did but he ended up having to prove it and these things became into uh, law, the laws of electricity which eventually became the um maxwell's equations okay and I see. I see. and those principles are true or as far as we could figure out they're true um we you know violating them is pretty hard so that explains that but it doesn't explain what uh like how you can do that with gravity and just basically say i claim that light is bent by um the bending of space and time because of the mass of something and that's 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 not provable i mean how, it's how much that? well how so? how so? because by proving by but you can't prove something you have to negative there could be many reasons why the star was slightly deviated in 1919 but star? Sir, the star that was observed to have moved slightly when they where sir arthur eddington did his ah. uh observation yeah. now yeah, a yeah. lot has changed since then but it could have been because you observe it doesn't mean that you're right automatically but he rushed and invented stellar theory based on yeah. radiation and gravitation all in 1926 and i think we haven't really left that and in, yeah didn't he more or less set out to prove einstein right yeah but you can't yeah. do that you have to no. go the other way around that's right. so but that's right. let's let's say let's people go well we use that theory to say something about the way that satellites and gps works and i'm like no 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 no. we measured the radioactive decay all the way into space okay and then we said it's because of time dilation because of einstein well what if the radioactive decay changes because you get further from the earth and it has less of an electric field holding your electrons in place so you being further from the planet is actually what's happening not the decay the time dilation effect that you're saying happens that we can't even measure see what i mean i see yeah and with that they use that in back that same backwards logic to say well gps works therefore einstein's right Mm -hmm. and that's not the case we measured it before and we knew about it before einstein even came up with it we've sent balloons up there long before with radiometers on them to understand this effect long before we put things up there you know yeah and i think that that's part of the problem is that we've been we have been told this proves this and that's not how that works it's there could be many reasons why that happens. One of them could be that there is a time dilation, and one of them could be the electric charge of the planet. Mm -hmm. 
And since we can do that on the Earth and measure it, like, clearly, it seems more likely that it is the electric field and not, quote unquote, the bending of space and time, unquote. Well, you see you know, what I mean? Like, if I was yeah, just as an yeah. engineer, if I went and said, no, 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 you see the electric ball that I created, uh, this electric, uh, this metal ball that I have, and I've charged it up. Uh -huh. And now notice how when I bring something close, the reactive decay is slower. And when I pull it far away, the reactive decay is faster. Yeah. Yeah. yeah OK. OK. Yeah. So that's caused by time dilation. My professor would just go, what? Yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. Exactly. That's ridiculous. He'd just go, no, it's a charge field. That's the, pretty and, cool. and you can gauge that field by putting it putting it to a to on a not unlike a map, like we were talking about the um, the field of uh, the magnetism that they say breaks. Well, you could do a charge field just with the same thing, and you could see where it goes out and at what point it starts to peter off and all that stuff. And this is what. I feel like we're trying to deal with with people who don't know they're so wrapped up in this idea that uh -huh. Einstein has to be right that they're not looking at the very logical answer. Well, it's beyond me why they don't even look at the simplest things. Like, for example, just a minute ago, I had a picture here of Saturn, how it is uh, situated. It's on a 26 degree angle. Earth mm -hmm. is on a 24 degree angle. Mars mm -hmm. is on, you know, and it, they're all so. The, doesn't anyone in that class up there or actually that, just they, they, think they, about they, what maybe caused that? They actually talk about that. In fact, uh, a lot has been coming recently. Mm -hmm. um, uh, basically, they've been saying that uh, what? Well, basically, the thing that they've come up with is that they've noticed that a lot of extra solar planets are like Jupiter. Jupiter and Mercury seem to be the only planets orbiting the sun that have come from the sun. And to say what I mean by when they come from the sun is that they were birthed from it. Uh, the planets were actually, um, the sun itself experienced a situation where it could no longer hold the amount right. of charge that it required right. with the given right. area that it had and had to make more area by barfing out a planet or two in mm -hmm. this case and these two bodies orbit just like right. extrasolar planets did like jupiter they basically orbit very close to their parent body and in our story in the Velikovskian story, Saturn was displaced by Jupiter and mm -hmm. Jupiter orbited where like orbited where Mercury was. And we orbited right. where Venus was. And right. then when those two bodies came in close proximity with each other, it was quote unquote clash of the Titans and the gods were fighting in the sky. Mm -hmm. And That's eventually actually. Saturn went flying with uh, the and of course, if you're looking from the bottom, that is definitely looked like an eye. So this oh, yeah. uh, this guy up top is no longer staring down. He's flying off, being hit with this uh, um, this other guy, his son apparently, Jupiter. And they're beating the crap out of each other, and of course, yeah. enter sumo wrestling as an imitation of that. And here we go again. They're taking off, and the water on the Earth rebalances. Our planet gets flung out a little bit till the orbit of let's say where it is now, and it captures the moon destroying our rings he put saturn in chains and enclosed himself in belts and bands yes the belts and bands are the ring, the bands of jupiter right that's why we have mummies yeah. yeah yep exactly uh the other one though um bound him in belts and chains this is likely yeah. because saturn was not alone in this situation i think we've talked about this about uh like, who was Saturn? Who was this? Who was that? Well, we were talking about the acorn the mm -hmm. and the handbag and all this stuff. And yes, 
Yes. And I said, well, look, shin at, bond. look at the wrist of that guy. If you assume that the guy with the eagle head and the wings is Jupiter and the little ball in the middle of him is the only thing that's actually Jupiter, the rest of it's plasma all around him, the magnetic field pluming down and pluming upwards. Okay, and there's going to be some thing going around him probably. Um, and then just bands and stuff, they could probably see if they look close enough as it was close enough to do. And then the, it's going to have a hand <laughs> holding a handbag and it's going to have an acorn or whatever. The handbag, the acorn is actually probably the head of um, Uranus, like the planet Uranus. And the reason I say that is because it has those same weaving heads can i get a picture of it Where actually I... yeah you could um look for venus figurines and you will see if, if venus venus i think the venus figurines are all um saturn coming into the system okay with uh mars down below see the headdress right that here? one there Th that one there yeah or the one below it to the lower left yeah that see the headdress yeah both of them that's what I mean. That's the same consistency as the acorn. Okay. I right. So I think that that is at the top. Saturn's uh, boobs <laughs> are, is, is, is where the boobs are. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or maybe below. I don't know. But the head was probably uh, Neptune and uh, Uranus. Uranus, of course, started because it's on an angle or something, had a really cool effect going across it. Uh, probably like um, um, not unlike anode tufting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so okay. it is the acorn now as that yeah. whole conglomeration goes off into space. And the acorn and the handbag, the reason the handbag, the handbag is, is Saturn probably being seen remember remember we're seeing it we can only see it now from one point of view once it gets far enough away from us we can only see it we are rotating around the sun at one au okay so we can only see it from two au difference away okay triangulating if you know what i mean and the Oops. further it gets away the the we can only see it from one point of view so what we're seeing is everything going away from the sun okay so yeah. that handbag and that acorn are both really stretching away from the sun from our point of view. Okay. It's got, yeah. It's got a giant booty. Well, it's not <laughs> a real, it's not a real person. We, we've, we've, <laughs> and that's probably the first thing we anthropomorphize. In our honey, life. This is too big, honey. I gotta go. <laughs> like we've anthropomorphized the whole thing to, 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 I mean, look at the head on it right now. You see what I mean? It's yeah. not human. And this 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 oh, hit, this hand dress this he, this handbag, if you look on the wrist of that that deity, he had that little um, he had the symbol for Saturn on his wrist, which yeah. indicates to me that this is the god and he's being held on, he's bound by chains as you said, yeah. Yeah. by Jupiter. Jupiter's like I got a hold of all of you now. Okay, and the, they're all flying out into space as a conglomeration that eventually breaks up and becomes the 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 um, well the outer planets of today. Amazing. So this thing was uh, a gigantic mural, if you will, in the sky with planets. For well, heads remember we, we it came it it was all glowing. Okay, or was it all one mass that just blew up in a bunch no, of? No, 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 no. It's 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 this is you're seeing the plasma itself. You're not okay. seeing any planets. And the planets are, are all okay. dots lined up. Oh, up, up so it was it was pretty far away then. Okay. Oh yes, but when it entered mm -hmm. in for the first time, remember we got to understand when we started seeing these. We started seeing them seventy five thousand years ago or more. Mm -hmm. And they looked like a certain shape. And then they came back and they came back. And eventually, one time they came back, they looked like the, the cicadas, the the wings with the two snakes going down to the bottom, which became the symbol for medicine. Right. You know, that's the same. That's the same object as that. And mm -hmm. sometimes it looked like it had a like it was coming in and it was nodding. Uh, and you'll see that whole uh, that's that's, I think, uh uh, that that nodding is that effect of um, 
of it it's not being in the same balance. You can see the changes over the years. The Venus, oh yeah, oh yeah. Like like and and each like twenty five thousand and then there's different ones. And mm -hmm. see twenty to forty thousand and yeah. you get, and different yeah. eras have different shapes to it. This tells me that it's not a woman that they're thing. They're seeing something in the sky. And before right. that, I think right. that they were seeing what we call the Aleutian hand axe which is an off-centered um, teardrop shape that they thought was used for hunting or something, but I think it's the same structure. It was, but, but, but even before, like hundreds of thousands of years ago, we imitated that. Uh, it's A-A-L-U-T-I-O-N, -A -A -E yeah, like the illusion, right? Illusion hand axe. Oh. Yeah. There. Well, that's going to give you some prices. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Let's pick one up at. Uh, go, go click, click on um, eBay. 103 bucks. Hey, they got this new walking stick. There it is. Badass. Can you, uh, I'll talk about it later. Where? Which one? Uh, the second one in, I think, is one. This one? Uh, that's... No, that's not it. Okay. Aleutian. You spelt it incorrectly, but it's it. Uh, it's like the Aleutian Islands. How do you spell it? Just tell me. Well, I a think it's is a, it I a N. Yeah, I think so. And the axe has an E at the end. Oh, it does? I always thought axe was just a... Okay. Well. Aleutian. There you go. Okay. okay. Maybe I should put ancient. There, there's some pictures of it. No, no, uh, that's actually pretty good. But no, there was a one right there. There's some. Yeah, see? Oh, yeah. And that's yeah. what I mean, the shape of it. So imagine that. Sharp. Yeah, it's like flint. So, so don't, they're holding it upside down, but flip it upside down the other way. No, don't actually do this. But if you just picture it upside down, that's the same as a Venus figurine. I see. Because the the basically the uh, Mars is at the bottom, the middle is uh, Saturn, and then there's Neptune and uh, Uranus above it. And these objects were revered, and they're always the same. They always have something off to the side. See, it's never centered. Mm. It's not actually centered. If you see them, they're always centered wrong one hmm. side or the other that's what made them so unique because people yeah. were wondering why would you make it off center like what yeah. advantage was that uh because it, it makes right. no sense it's even in the picture the front view see it yeah and see how yeah. it has a complete off center it's mm -hmm. not made for it's not a weapon it's a it's one of our first ceremonial things about things in the sky that wow. our mon our monkey people did and with our monkey brain <laughs> Okay, we were looking up at this thing coming in and we were like, holy Jesus Christ, you know, without knowing it was Jesus Christ or anything at the time or whatever. And yeah. this guy's coming in and yeah. it, it leaves again. Okay, so they stop making these things. And then next mm -hmm. time it comes in, it looks like a figurine. So they do the figurine for I don't know how many years and then it stops again. And the next time it comes in, it has a longer neck or it's more stretched out. Okay, yeah. and then yeah. by that time, the, the last time it came in, it caught our planet and when we saw it come in it was one of the last symbols with the flaming you know wings and everything and we're like okay and you know it was getting real close to us and voila here we are uh we started imitating that and it became like our golden age for 2000 years until things got really rocky and uh the two go the gods fought and they went flying and gravity changed again and all the huge Animals that suddenly were being happy, li happily living with less gravity are suddenly crushed. Mm. And the whales were going, are going, we're fine. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm good. Good down here. Hey, Andy, where are you at? I haven't heard from you all night. You sleeping? <laughs> he passed out. Did he pass out? He might have. It's late. <laughs> I don't know. What time is it there? Let's see. There are fish. No, oh, no, there I'm is. still here. Uh, just, just kicking back. Listening, listening. Huh? Are we busy? 
because oh. a couple of times it's been hard to get a word in. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm done. I'm done. Go ahead. <laughs> Join us. Sir. I always let my guests talk. Do talk. That's the way I like to work anyway. I know sometimes if I if I want to do the talking, I make a video. If I'm on an, if I'm doing an interview or a chat, I just let my guests do the talking mostly. Because you know, that's who well, we want to hear. So we come well, sometimes, to hear. Yeah. Sometimes, Greg, when you have a three way conversation, sometimes one has to be quiet because it did it between two and all that. So <laughs> yeah, it works. And the cows think so too. Hey, like yeah. a good reporter, um, Neil, you got to know when to shut up and let the people answer the question, don't you? <laughs> so she just agreed. Hey, I'm gonna. You got your got your camera on. I'll uh, put the. I'll let the folks see the cows. Hold on. Um, That's you got your lovely. camera? Hang on, I've got to get that work. Hold on, I'm gonna. On. Turn, I'm gonna try no, um, this. Put you on. Uh, go to Skype. Okay, let's see. Yeah. I'm loving that. Hang on. Losing it. Where the hell is Skype? Only up the top. Where is it? I can't put the camera on. What the heck? Where's my mouse? Oh, now my mouse is disappearing. You must have dropped it. I can't. I can't. I don't know where my mouse is. Hold on. It's got to be here somewhere. Bad looking at it. What was that idea? I made nice takes. I'm going to kill the slideshow. <laughs> okay. They're too good for hamburgers. Now yeah. I just got to find. I can't get my mouse. I can't see my mouse cursor. That's crazy. Oh, Roy. Right. Oh, that could ever happen. Drop out on you. There we go. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's really giving you a ball now. Where well, you gotta feed it or something, dude. Poor thing. No, nah, she's What's she's her disappointed. Name? Cause she got her name. I don't know. You don't give you don't give him a name. Elsie. Right. Like we said, yeah. you don't give them names. You're gonna eat them. Yeah, I get too attached. No, calm down. Hey. What's that, an elephant? <laughs> See, so that one over there. Yeah. That one oh, there. Are you lucky? And that one there. But they may yeah. get luck. One of them will get luck and be kicked as a bull. And, and then eh? a baby cow that you can like get fat and then so. And he'll be a bull. Like, he'll be a bull. Yeah. And then, yeah, the rest of them, you disable that part of their anatomy. Right? Holy smokes! <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess. I, yeah, I think. I think I got my mouse back. Oh my god! Thank you. Oh, that's good. What the heck, man? They got all that, didn't you, Greg? You got all What's that, that, didn't you? I saw it. I think so. so. You got all that, didn't you? Uh, you know what? I lost my mouse. I'm trying to... There. I think the folks can see it. I hope. Yeah. Oh. I don't know what yeah. they're seeing. See, these, these animals are well. Yeah. These animals are handled very well. So they're not hard to... They're not hard to, um, you know, work with. Yeah. No, we were. Uh, I, I would have to thank our ancestors for that. It was very smart of us. They were like, these things are really big and uh, full of meat and don't really argue much. Not like mm -hmm. these moose and elk who really get really complaining. Well, I think if you have a look, it's like most things, even humans. Um, you can control them for, for, for basically through food and water. And then from there you can from there then you can sort of educate them to what you want, you know. You don't no, no, really the only reason that, the only reason I'm, uh, I I brought it up is because they tried doing that with moose, and no matter what they tried, moose will never uh, accept gunfire, <laughs> like horses, for example, and they will not accept slaughterhouses. Because the moment that they see a one go in, they know what happened, and they're not going to go in there. Well, I can smell it. Yeah, I can, that's I can what I mean. It. They're not. The, they're not the same. Yeah, like cows are a different type of breed. You, you know what I mean? Like, and I'm cool with that. I'm not saying anything. Like, I'm not PETA eating all over the place or anything. But well, yeah, but we've basically changed them. Yeah, that's what I mean. We changed them structure. exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, yeah. 
and we and uh, I kind of yeah. res- I kind of respect the fact that we've got a sort of a a relatively happy symbiotic relationship with them. Well, farming basically allowed us to have the free time to pursue all those other things like the cosmos <laughs> and all well, that, yeah. didn't it? Well, and it's, you know, it's once, a wonder. I also farming, wonder. And we, and we basically were able to have a controlled food system so I know I've got food. And then it made it a lot. Well, yeah. Lot Obviously, it, it yeah. is the fact that you could have people who weren't just obsessed with making food. Then you can build a society. You're right. And mm, mm, mm. Uh, well, that's one of the that's one of the points. You want food, and, and of course, you need a structure. What do you want? What? How do you want your society? If you get what I mean, like which commun- community? Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. But I'm yeah, guys. Uh, yeah, I think I'll go to me. I'm gonna have to call it because I'm, I've, I'm, I got my mouse back, but I'm having all kinds of problems here. Everything got miniature. I don't know what the well, hell we, this is all about. We were here for an hour. We were talking for an hour and a half. Don't worry about it. It's great. I had a great time. We could do oh, it yeah. again. Well, two hours is where I like to go, and that's what we were at. So that's really weird. How in the world did that happen? Everything on my computer got really small. Now I can't even control it. <laughs> it's always oh, something. What, I what, swear. Well, I, I, I know the there. problem, sir. Got it the back. Problems. Okay, I got it back. All right, guys. Well, yeah, this was a great a great time. And of course, we're going to hook up again. I'd like to do this on a regular basis now. Yeah, great, and it's too bad guest. Shockwave didn't show up there. I know, I know. What's up with that dude? I, you told me he was going to come twice now. Bad boy. <laughs> he's got to come next time. Oh, oh and, uh, and uh, thank you to whomever was sending me messages about Craig. Oh, that was, uh, Car- that was Carter. He saved me. Yeah. Uh, sending messages, and I was very thankful because I was like, oh, okay, good. Now we know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I wanted you to hang out until I got back, but I wasn't back until 10. Oh, no. Yeah. We, we heard he gave us updates on how long it was going to be, and then we were like, oh, yeah, it's going to be out for a while. Yeah. That was crazy. We were talking, and we were talking. I was listening. All of a sudden, everything just went black. We didn't have any house lights or nothing. I looked out; everything was dark. We, we drove around, and man, it was miles. My, my my parents got little. Just uh, is an interesting thing that we things that we didn't have when we were kids that we can have now that I really love. Are mm-hmm. those? There's there's they look like lanterns and they hold LEDs in them. Mm-hmm. You know, and you can mm-hmm. basically just open a little bit or open a lot. And it's mm-hmm. and it will because it's LEDs. They're a full lantern and will last for like a long time. So mm-hmm. it, I thought that was pretty neat that you can get. Uh, I mean, compared to what it used to be to get those lights to light with all the heat that was coming off them. I enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed. Uh, I enjoyed the uh, the that advantage at least in technology. Well, yeah, definitely. We we do have a lot of cool little gadgets we can rely on thank god for the internet right jeez actually it's kind of funny because i have a i couldn't get a regular bulb that was incandescent so i had to go buy a comically large one (laughs) and put it in my room because if it's comically large that's okay that's not a home device or anything but still plugs in the same socket yeah (laughs) so this is like nine inches long and it has like the little uh the little uh, light going through it, the, the tungsten thing, and you can see it like wrapping up like a, well, like on my shirt, or, you know, the stairway to heaven thing. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Well, listen, this was a Patreon live stream like the last time. And uh, we got Jared watching, which is cool. Jared's a good guy. And, uh, well, eventually it'll go live on YouTube, but I just wanted to tell you I appreciate your participation you know it's awesome thank uh, you i love being here thank you oh that's great you're welcome to come on anytime so let's just do this again in a couple of days what do you think uh well i'm going to my parents as soon as the snow clears so i guess that depends when well, well yeah just let me know when you're going 
Sure. We'll work, we'll work it out. We've we'll, got to right. talk soon because I love this. And I was thinking, you know, I wanted to jump back on uh, after we I played our last session on live stream YouTube. I wanted to jump on and start chatting with everybody in the room. But the problem sure. is my mic has this buzz and I'm paranoid that it's going to be buzzing. So that's why I recorded it, because if it is, I can just play the recording and don't buzz. But <laughs> for, fortunately, I've gotten past that problem. Good, good. Know, I hope. Well, I don't mind at all. I enjoy uh, hel helping to answer people's questions, so no problem. Oh, yeah, man, we've got some great subscribers, and, and uh, the Patreons are awesome, too. So, yeah, we appreciate it. Thank you. Take care, my friends. All right, guys, we'll see you soon, huh, Andy? Yeah, yeah, catch a lighter, Greg, catch a lighter, yeah. Neil. Yeah, hey, yeah, let me know what you guys, if if you guys want to watch. It was a good conversation, Absolutely. even if I didn't say much. <laughs> we, covered all the, we covered all the bases. If you want to, Neil, yeah, if you're hey. into watching movies, me and Andy like to watch movies together on Skype. Oh, I yeah, do that. I, I actually, uh, I do that with my gaming friends a lot, too, so. Oh, really? Well, oh, gonna, yeah, we do it all the time. I'm about I'm about to get into Avatar: The Last Airbender. If you want to watch it with me, if you don't have to go, I can just stay on. Oh no, no, I got to get back to these wanna, guys. Is so. that the second? Yeah. Is that the, okay. is that the next installment of that? Great. Yeah, it's a movie great. series made from the anime. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what you should be watching that just came out tonight. What? Three Body Problem just came out tonight. Oh really? Where? Yeah. On Netflix. Three body problem. You can also download it, of course, off uh, yeah. a pirate station in the world. But the thing, I, the reason I bring it up is because uh, it's it's sci-fi, but it's also existential horror. Uh -huh. Because you know the what would re really be like if aliens were to come oh, to the Earth, or that even would be awful. What, no, no, no. But it's it's not. It, it's. Let's just say that they wouldn't attack us. They would attack us fast first and then stop us from progressing while they build up what they had to do. do you think it's very that, interesting stuff. Do you think anywhere in the galaxy something like that is going on where one race subverts another race for, from a different planet? Well, the answer to this question is actually... In other words, you think we're all is, humans? <laughs> It's actually answered in that in that that book series because that book series is called the Three Body Problem. But one of the situations is is that what if the reason that we don't hear anything from any other civilizations is because the moment that they uh, one civilization gets enough technology that they can destroy another civilization at a distance, then they don't bother even waiting for them to grow bigger. They just kill them in their crib. Right. The moment yeah. they reach out, a bit like, like, a bit like you're the talking planets, about Neil. human beings, man. We do it all. Neil, a bit like the planets. You know, there's a system in place that keeps them apart, and it's, it's probably the same. And another thing is, you've it got just to seems define like that would be life that would because be we okay. define life as carbon, carbon, carbon based. You know? And here we are good. now, like you said before, with AI and that, we're creating a new life form which could end up taking on its own identity eventually. And it wouldn't necessarily be carbon based. So, yeah. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, it would be, I mean, here's a we don't know where example of how, how crazy this could be. We could try, yeah. we could make contact with another civilization and they could think that we're all that in a bag of chips. Okay. Yep. And then yep. somewhere during the time of our communication, AI has taken over our planet and killed all the humans and is now prepared to go deal with these guys. And their answer is simply they're going to pretend to be humans until they can't anymore. Yeah, well, they're going to be, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, wow, I never even well, thought of that. Yeah. Like, like, because so, we don't see it. What I'm getting from the whole scene is the fact that uh, I don't know why that's playing. It shouldn't be. But what I don't get is uh, that everything they want to do is somehow sexual. What? You know, they want to they want to take our DNA or uh, make like breed with women and make alien babies. 
fucking oh, oh, around. That kind of stuff. We're okay, fucking okay. around with cattle. No, 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 no. What no, are no, they no. doing? I'll tell. I'll tell you where that comes from. That's actually really easy. Okay, all of that is the paranoia that was dredged up from 1979's Alien, and onward from there. Where yeah. I mean, um, let's face it. The whole xenomorph creature is a double rape situation that just destroys teenage boys. It scares the crap out of them. <laughs> okay, and 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 it was a great idea, but it put in. I mean, if you watch movies from the nineteen, like even Hangar Eighteen from nineteen eighty, it was so banal of a spy idea compared to the X Files that came out in the nineties. You know what I mean? So we got to understand that reality and sensationalism are playing a part in this and uh those type of uh you know okay there's aliens and we were not even worried about aliens and then suddenly aliens and they're going to alien probe us now we're scared of them see what i mean like it's all like but but that's just because it in marketing terms that's just more sensationalism and therefore better like it's just it's gonna it's gonna play better like, I mean, if the aliens are bad and they do bad things, I mean, that even works in Star Trek. I mean, some of the, the most scariest aliens that I remember are the ones that were like kidnapping people and taking them to other dimensions to like experiment them on them medically. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it just it, freaks it, us out. It, yeah, that's right. I, mean, I don't understand what is their genius failing or something. Um, I've heard something like it. So. No, but I don't think it, I don't think they're like I said. I don't doing? think that there there's no aliens around. I think that keeping on to build a species that can survive on Earth. Well, it'd be a lot easier to build a suit first. Well, that's true. That's what <coughs> we would. That's and what we could, would do. Well, anyone would do. Like it's just and, funny, you know. I don't. I just don't believe these people that get. You know, kidnapped and taken. It's just that that ruins it for me because it's just too beyond belief. Well, and that's the thing. Uh, there are some situations, though, that we do know that high electric and magnetic fields can cause uh, sensations of terror and hallucinations. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't yeah. want to pretend that I know that I would be able to deal with, like, as much as I'm an intelligent human being. If I saw something I couldn't explain happening in front of me, I, I, like, I actually happening like uh, a plasma form that looks like a disc actually touching down somewhere, going through a field or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I'd handle that. I know. That's so, just... and I don't know how my brain would react to the field. And, uh, yeah, you know, now luckily, you know, I've had some experience with uh, altered states. So I could recognize it's happening, but it's sort of like trying to recognize that you're in a dream. <laughs> you know, there's there's was something in the news recently. That my son was telling me about. Apparently, some man with stage four lung cancer got sucked up into a UFO, and he fell out, and he became completely, totally clear of his cancer. They couldn't explain it. Uh, if it is a plasma form, then God knows what plasma does to the human body. We don't play with that. We have not played with that, except for fire. We know what fire does to the human body and electricity. That's about it. So you but think we don't really know what plasma fields do to the human body. No, we don't, but we know it. we're probably plasma, right? I mean, skin is plasma. Bone is probably plasma. Uh, blood blood is. is plasma. Blood is plasma. So, I mean, I mean it's extremely conductive. So the universe is 99.99% plasma. Where does the electricity come from? Does plasma ah, spawn electricity? There you go. What came first? Well, I would, if I was, I someone asked me, like, what is the creation of the universe to you? And I basically said, okay, take two areas of the universe of infinite size, okay? Yeah. Because they're both infinite. Okay, and each one of them has a different charge in it slightly that's it just slightly different because it can't stay even 
we know about the laws of of electricity you cannot have an even field yeah. okay so you're going to have one charge on one side one charge on the other and it will form a double layer over time because light and the electricity takes time to travel but given that it would sense it instantly still yeah. i think and yeah. one of the situations would be it would form a double layer and if once that double layer touched in some area an explosion would occur and that explosion ongoing is what we see of the universe yeah it's just true. a spark that's yeah. going off right now just a spark yeah and it will be over eventually yeah and i don't know how long it is. i hope it's a long time well look at all yeah. the pieces of it look at all the galaxies and all the little tiny sparklings going on there's a lot going on there something now, what, had what, to generate what, that and there's Didn't obviously just... electricity flowing from one area of charge in the universe to another that's, I mean, that's all yeah. i can say i don't that's know how thing. that's powered yeah. but i would assume it's not it's... really quote unquote powered as much as it built up because of the laws of um as I, I talked about of laws of plasma, it just doesn't stay even. It will, it will uh, begin to uh, misshape itself. And as soon as it starts doing that, it will form, like I said, double layers. One has a, one charge on one side. But these charge areas of our infinite size, so how long will it keep pumping charge across this? The universe, what we consider the universe, is it's just the little dot of spark in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. And then how big is this outside? You know what I mean? And yeah. we could I, we could generally yeah. assume, generally assume that it will be hourglass shaped. What That's, came first? What came like does you think I mean do you think we spontaneously combusted or is there a spark starter? No, but that's, I think the starter was the fact that these two areas of space could not stay even. Whatever the areas of space were. Do, do you think consciousness came before matter or matter before consciousness? Um, if we're going back before the universe was created in that sense, mm -hmm. then there's only there's only literally negative and positive. There is right. no thought. Right. Uh, or all everything that in in the entire universe that ever happened happened in that little dot in the middle between these two charges going right. on right yeah that's it so the th universe so that if that's right <clears throat> and that doesn't necessarily mean that i'm right either but mm -hmm. if i would but i don't think that there's some guy on a big bicycle making power for the universe <laughs> you know so yeah, there's something that's a good way of putting it. so i don't think there's an engine to this <laughs> process i think that i mean there's little engines to the process the conversion of going to a right angle and this whole spinning and the is spinning up and getting matter and all the little complexities of getting more matter which loses electricity but gets heavier and heavier elements within it and mm -hmm. spools up into four full galaxies that i can all see happening inside that situation but to a giant it's just a spark uh, cool. If we go closer, though, if you go closer, you would, could see that you would start seeing the tubes and the things running because they would, if you were, you would they'd be thick enough. Mm -hmm. I guess you could say, like, let's imagine you could slow time down. The bigger you are, the slower you get. Well, then things like galaxies would be on strings that we could see the tubes reaching between them. Mm -hmm. you know and 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 they would look solid to us because we would be so big that we could like grab it with our hands and it would be like a tube like just like the what, that planet that you had on the screen there that red one yeah with all the things that's jupiter obviously but yeah. with and would have probably looked like a long time ago but mm -hmm. there would be every one of those bands comes up with a a uh comes out from the planet uh, as plasma sheets and then goes up up to the north of the planet and up out into space mm -hmm. and look like wings and that right there that that beautiful uh, formation uh, is something that's happening because and you could see it because it's glowing fast enough that you could see it with your own eyes 
but if we are bigger than that, we would see those type of hourglass shapes and everything everywhere. Like all those little parts around stars that we could see that are just like the ones around the right there, the blue one and uh, like those those nebula there, all of that would be, you could literally see it all and it would look solid to you because you would be solid to it because you're going so slow and the electric field, because remember when we, they're not lying when they say, you don't really never touch anything. You're just, mm -hmm. the electrons on your fingers are touching the electrons of something else. I mean, technically, you feel like you're touching each other because that's how the electrons and stuff work. But it's really just fields touching each other. There's no real, the real matter never touches each other. The real cores of the, of the nucleuses of the atom are not touching and neither are the electrons. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what I mean by being, it's all, so if you go bigger, they, and you start seeing like the planets, uh, like the local chimney, and that becomes a solid object to you. Well, then what would the other currents? And then, of course, you could follow these currents through the great attractor and you could see them all lined up. They just wouldn't be like stars. They would actually look like something else. I don't know what color they'd be. I don't know what else they would look like. Would they resemble a brain? Would they resemble organs? I don't well, know. Well, you know, look at the shape of galaxies. It almost looks like a giant swirl of electricity. Well, that's because of the homopolar motor. It is a swirl of electricity. Yeah. Uh, oh. You have a current going in the North Pole and the South Pole. How they and, can ignore that, I just, I, it's beyond me. Well, it's because they have propped it up over time. Like, remember when we said that, remember black holes were black? Yeah. Yeah, it's just what I mean. They now they shoot out jets, and these jets are at the center of galaxies, which explains the giant radio halos that they get. And yeah. that and that is not how an electrician or electrical engineer would say is happening. He would say no, but they need to keep that because they need to keep Newton, like we said. Yes, yes. And what do you make? Go ahead. I'm just going to say that's all it is. It's it's really comes down to the fact that we're humans. Science is working correctly, but we're dumb. <laughs> what do you make of FRBs? Fat, uh, fast radio bursts? Or, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, imagine that you're a giant pulling off a sweater. Okay. And it's wintertime, and all the sparks are going off. That's what they are. Every little connection that are happening mm -hmm. around our heliopause, they only last for a split second. They're just a small spark where charge moves from point A to point B. Uh, it, we would see more of them. Like they would be, like if they were happening in an atmosphere, they'd be catastrophic. But they're happening in empty space. So the space between them is incredibly large. And they don't even get to the point where they enter into the visual range. They're still in radio range. They're still in the radio spectrum. So they're basically I, like radio static popping. I that's that's yeah, my opinion. SARS, basically. Well, I think that it's probably, if I was betting, it would probably be somewhere around the heliopause. Like it might actually be that close to us, that it's actually just oh. happening around us. That's one of the problems with it. It doesn't. It's not behaving. It's, it appears anywhere. Yeah. In, in my opinion, if it's happening anywhere, then it's yeah. not. Uh, it's not listening to the laws of like being close to uh, a galaxy. Then, in my opinion, it's happening close to us. Yeah, uh, Ted has a similar theory with light. He says pretty much all light that we see is locally generated. It's not coming from light years away. I think that's a bit insane but i'm not sure <laughs> well that's what he, he's got no no no, no. I'm, I'm okay with thinking it because i mean like just recently i had a conversation talking to you guys about how i think that the light that left a star coming to our eyeball didn't experience any time getting here that's yeah that that, that, that i can yeah. agree with right. it, that's it what equals mc what squared sense yeah. that i can agree with e equals mc squared says that and yeah, I do agree that that being the truth, but just yeah. because that's the truth doesn't mean that light bends because of gravity or that gravity is because of a hole in space time that we're bending. Yeah, that's, eh, that seems no, a he crazy. wouldn't 
he wouldn't get with that either. I don't I think he's pretty much straight up electric universe. Well, he's and, he has a, his own take on it, but I will tell you yeah. right now that I would uh, I don't I wouldn't rep- misrepresent him because some of this I mean number one he has some great thoughts and number two yeah some yeah. of the other stuff might be pareidolia like we've talked about but at the end of the day right. we're actually sitting here going you know what there might be yeah. something to uh, the idea that there is life I mean if 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 there is life found on any planet out there that's under an ocean mm-hmm. okay his name will be first when talking about it because he well, came know, up with it a long time ago see what i mean so like that so in a case i give him credit yeah. where credit is due for putting that on the line and yeah with with like i said there could be freaking human beings that get sucked up and dropped onto mars for all i know yeah. here we're going to find yeah. a, yeah, a right. corpse a, a right. dead body up there and going what <laughs> well, I think it's it's a cool mental leap is what I think it is. You're talking about his main theory, yes. But, you know, I mean, yeah, he had this thing knows? he called the machine gun theory of light where he cited an experiment with, uh, uh, I think, Ralph Sansbury, if I'm not mistaken, or one of those guys. He did an experiment where he fired a laser at a target that had a trap on it where it would close. And he, he closed the trap first, then fired the laser, but somehow it registered. Because it, it registered before it even got there. You know what I'm saying? Well, I will tell you this much that I can say. I can't I remember can say enough that to What we know about quantum theory is wrong. Yeah. Uh, just on but the face of it. So Electricity is instant, right? Well, see... I have questions about that. We don't usually talk about electricity because it travels. If nothing else, it travels. We consider it instant when I do my math. Right. Like if I yeah, if okay. I like if I turn the switch on, the yeah. next millisecond that I have on my chart will yeah. have that that line will go from zero to five volts. Let's say. And therefore, mm-hmm. I can start calculating every single voltage across that whole line and everything off of that, just as mm-hmm. soon as I know that happens. And that's and so let's say I want to take a uh, an example, like let's say I want to register way out here somewhere inside the circuit. I want to mm-hmm. know where that point, what the voltage is at that point, at zero, one millisecond, two milliseconds, three milliseconds, four milliseconds, and so on. We don't consider mm-hmm. the speed that it gets there. Mm-hmm. It's instant to us. Right. Yeah. And so playing on, but playing on a galactic scale, I have no idea. Like I, w- is it instant or is it responding to light speed forces? Now, I don't know. Electrons travel at light speed, but the electron isn't traveling in this case. See, for example, uh, if I we think that electrons are moving around a wire, and yes, in a sense, they are, but they only move a little tiny bit in the wire, and they create an electric field across that wire that is moving extremely fast. Mm-hmm. And that's what would be happening in space too. The moment charges move, they'll create fields, electric fields. Yeah. Which of course create magnetic fields, and you can see where this is going. Mm-hmm. I mean, if the solar wind, the solar wind is an electric field because it's all these charges moving outwards, then mm-hmm. and we know that the sun has a magnetic field that flips and it goes down through the center of the sun from the poles. Well, that's and those that wind, by the way, is powering everything that happens on our planet. Yep. I, I I'm trying to yep. stress yep. that to people. Just the wind flying by yep. us and the light hitting it, okay, is creating everything that's happening on this planet. All life, all wind, all water movement, all electron movement, all the heat, everything is caused by just that thing flying by us. Yeah, so, even the current and rivers, they even call it a current. 
Well, exactly. This whole thing then, including everything that we're doing, every computer that's running and everything that we're doing right now, like in tooling talking is being powered by that flying bias. Mm -hmm. And that is considered electrically speaking, a load on the circuit. Yeah. And yeah. we are expressing like a light bulb, the currents that are flowing into the planet. And I don't just, I, I mean the ones that are normally plus and don't knock out the light that is hitting it, by the way, as much as mm -hmm. people like to go, oh, well, light doesn't do that much. Dude, at our, okay, it is 1,350 watts per meter at the edge of the atmosphere. And by the time it hits the earth, it's 1,000 watts per meter. Okay, that just, and that's hitting the grass and heating up everything, okay? Yeah. That right there is per meter, by the way. And there's a lot of meters on the freaking surface of the planet. And if you think about it then, the 350 watts that it lost traveling to the earth was absorbed by the atmosphere, mm -hmm. which it means per meter, it's getting this much energy. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that is a lot of energy in addition to the currents that might be flowing by to the magnetic field and so forth, which is still hundreds of millions of watts. Per second. Andy, where'd you go? I didn't mean to make you shut your phone or your Actually, mic off. you know what? I think we talked too much again. I should uh, that's okay. All right. Was, well, there's that... our two hours. We did it. Yes, we did it. All right. Well, no, no, we'll... no. I'm still here, Greg. I'm still here, Greg. Don't worry about that. Uh, did you feed your cow? Yeah, yeah. I'll be, <laughs> and I'm gonna and I'm gonna listen to that last bit again because that was interesting. I didn't yeah. quite catch it all. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. So um, feels always deep. So no, that was quite good. And um, yeah, we got them just. Got hey, done. maybe we, maybe you'll have some questions and we can take them or whatever. That would be cool. I would like that. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> worth. And, and that's what people who, who are listening to it could do too, if they got questions and right. and that, and then you can go back through them and yeah, it gives a sort of secondary side, doesn't it? There might not be a like lot when we do the chats. My patreons are laid back. Yeah, but if you, but they'll they'll catch it, you know. Yeah. And it was kind That's of short right. notice too, right. so I got to give them a little bit better notice in two days. Hey, well, we, we uh, had an accident. It's okay. Yeah, yesterday was. It a doesn't month. matter. They're like, gonna, they're gonna forgive you. I hope so. <laughs> anyway, I'll talk to you both later. And have a, okay. and have a great night. Hey, all right then. Thank you very much. Do it again. No worries. Let's do it again soon, soon bye. fellas. Bye. See you later. No worries. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thanks again for watching, folks.